This is the Waitrose Cookery School. Welcome to my top table. She's the woman who first taught the nation how to cook. There's now made baking its favorite pastime. My top table guest is Mary Berry. Mary, I calculate, I don't want to make you feel old, well, I'm the same age as you are, but 60 years you've been in this business of teaching us how to cook. That indicates to me a kind of driving ambition from a very early age, was that so? Is it really 60 years? Yeah. Um, from an early age, I, I was at school, I didn't work very hard, and at 13 you were given the option of doing uh, Latin and maths or uh, domestic science, and you, I did domestic science, beautiful new department at school, I loved it from the day I started. I could do it. And somebody said to me, I mean, and uh, the teacher would say, well done, that was good. Mm -hmm. And so I got my confidence and I loved it. And I knew straight away, really, that that's what I would like to do, something to do with cooking. What about the, the business of, of only yeah. having that kind of, uh, or lack of uh, educational qualifications? Do you ever felt disadvantaged by that? Have you ever thought, as you grew older, I wish I'd worked harder, I wish I'd done something else, maybe? I wish I'd worked harder. Because, um, you know, I look at the um, great writers, something like Elizabeth David, you read uh, uh, her recipes and everything that goes with it. It is a sheer pleasure. Oh, Jane Grigson. Um, I don't have the uh, English... Uh, my English is dreadful. I don't go much further than delicious and wasn't that scrumptious, but um, <laughs> I can cook. And I hope that uh, my aim is to make people, if that, whether it's a book or uh, a television or whatever it is, that when they read it or see it, they think, I want to do that. And they've got confidence to do it, and I've told them where they might go wrong. And you've made it as simple as possible. Oh, too. simple. <laughs> and not too many ingredients, because I think of myself as a cook, and I do try to have as not too many ingredients and also things that you've got on your shelves that you use again. Mm. You know, something, um, take soya sauce, for example. I only use dark. Do I really need dark and light? Mm -hmm. you know, and other people are at home don't have a great shelf life and they might have a daughter like mine who comes along and looks at the cell bay date and says, that should go <laughs> out. Because, <laughs> you know, some of these things don't keep. Yes. And so I don't have a tremendous lot of spices and things, but I use them again and again. What about the, the time that you grew up, though? I think of your childhood, because again, like me, you grew up during the war years, rationing. I mean, people you know, didn't go through it, forget how awful and bleak it was. And it was a strange time, wasn't it? Because again, for somebody who has made a, a living out of celebrating food, by word, there wasn't much to celebrate, was there, in, in 1945, for instance? Exactly, and mum was a, a good manager. And I mean, you would have your roast on Sunday. Uh, it wasn't a big roast, and that was, you only ate a bit of it. And mm. then it was cold on Monday, did something with it, Tuesday in Rissoles or Shepherd's Pie or whatever it was. And rationing, uh, mum said, uh, if you all don't take uh, sugar in your tea and coffee, you will get a pudding or a cake once a week. Mm because uh, it was very, the, the amounts were very small. It's making use of what you've got, which wasn't an awful lot. And what about the, the entry into television? Well, you, you started in journalism, first of all, uh, Good Housewife, all that stuff. Then eventually you got a break into, into television. That would have been the a show that I did, first of all, called Tea Break, uh, which became uh, Good Afternoon. I missed you, you did Good That's Afternoon. That's right. Exactly. How did that happen? And what was your feeling when you were offered that? Were you frightened of it or what? Um, I can remember so plainly when I was offered it, Diana Potter was the uh, frightening uh, person in charge and she uh, went to Marks and Spencer's actually and bought a cookery book that was a freezer book. And she brought it back and she said, I understand what she's talking about, get her in. And I came in on Judy Chalmers' day mm. and... Um, I came in and I, people, freezers were just being introduced in the early 70s and they were mainly chest freezers and you had to sh show the principles of it, what you could freeze and yes. what you couldn't. Yes. It comes naturally now. Yes. But, um, and so I did that and I said, Judy said, you've enjoyed that, haven't you? Why don't you come with some more ideas? So I immediately came with some more ideas and uh, I was, uh, did it 
for quite a long time. You seem to take to it very easily, though. Was that the case? Did you find it quite easy to adapt to this? I mean, in those days, I mean, the cameras were huge. They were like Daleks, weren't they? And they made a big noise when they changed their lens. They went clunk. And it was, <laughs> they were very different days. Also, too, I remember very clearly, we didn't have the, the, the kind of facilities that they have nowadays. In the <laughs> Pro proper kitchens, didn't they? No, I mean, the kitchen there, uh, I used to, to be, come up from home, which was, uh, and with every pot and pan and everything at different stages, here's one I've made earlier. Uh, actually, I remember once leaving a cake in the hall. You know, I used to line the things up in the hall and the dog ate the cake before <laughs> I even got there. Anyway, we, we used to bring everything and as I used to arrive, um, you'd still see the news on the table because I used to get there at about half past seven in the morning, uh, all the news sheets and an empty room. And suddenly in would come the cooker and everything and the clock on the wall and, and the water. That was the thing. You know, the sink water would work and what would happen, I would take some lettuce over to wash and someone would signal to, uh, to uh, someone to turn a tap turn with the, the tapping, pipe. Yeah. Then I'd wash it and a bucket was underneath and Judy and I would be standing, Judy Chalmers and I would be standing in water because I was talking too much <laughs> and said, turn the tap off. It's all an illusion, isn't it? No, no, it was in those days, that's for sure. But, but I mean, good training, I mean, good... Uh, good training, but don't yeah. think I was calm. I was uh, <laughs> petrified. Yeah petrified but because I wanted to do well and I can remember Judy saying just remember you're not talking to a crowd the, you're talking to one mm. person who's at home perhaps mm. doing the ironing and if you don't make it interesting she'll go to the other channel the, the other thing that, that interested me when I was reading about you um, which is a, an echo in my life too because Mary had exactly the same problem is that you're a working mum at a time when working mums were not applauded let us say and, and you admit to having a, a sense of guilt, almost, about doing what you were doing, about being away from, from home. How profound, how disturbing was that? Did you ever feel like giving up the job because of that? I never felt like giving <clears throat> up because I was enjoying it and I had great support from Paul, my husband. Um, but, oh, I felt guilty. And, you know, uh, as soon as I was at home for a, a few days, I would then have other people's children in and we'd all make pizzas. I'd have pots of all different flavours and they would put the toppings on and because they'd chosen them, they'd eat them. We didn't go to theme parks and all that sort of thing, but we did things at home. And uh, I did feel guilty mm. and I didn't like leaving, especially when they'd got something wrong with them, uh, like um, chicken pox or something. Mm. Um, nowadays, mums can stay at mm. home. Every time I went to work and did what I did, and um, my husband and, and uh, a, a sort of mother's help would, uh, you know, help, but I felt guilty. And it's only now that the children say that they didn't mind. But uh, I remember, you know, your children aren't all saints. And I can remember Annabelle at about 17 saying, I'm never going to be a working mother. <laughs> She's now got three children and she loves to be of out working. She does. <laughs> I think you see there's, there's in you, I mean, you, you present this, this wonderful image of coming across on television, of being this sort of genteel teacher and this sort of thing. But in fact, there's a, there's a core of steel in you, isn't there? There is, when you look at your career. I mean, you, you, that's been your life and that's, what you've, that's what's driven you and that, that's what you... you I mean, your, your daughter said, a lovely quote from her, Mum doesn't like quiet. <laughs> did she say that, she cheeky did. monkey? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. How do you I, interpret that? You, see, you don't like. You don't like. No, I theaters, like things happening, and, like, and exactly. uh, I'm a doer. Yes. And um, uh, yes, my, uh, I like to finish the job. You know, uh, I, my father always, if he was, um, um, he made boats. He did all sorts of things, um, but he always finished the job. And I have inherited that. You know, if I'm uh, digging a bed in the garden or doing something. I don't go to bed till it's done. <laughs> and uh, it's the same if I'm uh, getting ready. I, I do an awful lot, I don't know about you now, but if I'm doing something like today, I put all my things out on the bed the night before with my notes, with my shoes, uh, because when I get up, I always think there's going to be a disaster. You know, the dog's been sick or something. <laughs> so I always get ready ahead of time. To, and, to go to work. And my recipes, I try and tell people what you can do ahead, because nowadays, People fit so much into their lives. Yeah. Uh, they're working yeah. um, or they've got uh, children to look after. So if they are having people around for kitchen supper, 
They want to know what they can do the day before. Do you get evidence that that's working, that philosophy? Do you get correspondence which are saying that you've changed my life or whatever? I get lovely correspondence. And um, since the Bake Off and since my own series, uh, I get a lot of it. And I do reply to everything mm -hmm. very shortly. I get a little bit cross when people say, my daughter's being married, what should we have uh, for the buffet and things like that. But little short questions I can deal with. Mm. Well, what about the Bake Off, since you, you raised the, the, uh, the issue there, what, nine million people? How, many people? how on earth do you expect nine million people to watch a program about baking bread or making fancy cakes? It's the Bake Off, I think is great family viewing. This is what people tell me. You know, I'll be in Waitrose and I'll be going through with my shopping and somebody will tap me on my shoulder and say, you've got my little girl baking or my son is making flapjacks. Uh, because people <laughs> watch it and it's achievable and they sit with their uh, parents and they all watch it, all ages, and then they ring up Gran afterwards and say, did you see that? It's really good family viewing, which is lovely to think that they're together. Not everybody is at home for Sunday lunch, but they are on a Tuesday night for Bake Off. It's been an extraordinary thing. It really has. Remarkable. And I, it's I, such I, fun. Is it fun to do? Oh, you enjoy it's it? great. Oh, excellent. Well, look, well, that's, that's, we've been talking about, about all your uh, career in this extraordinary career that you've had. And now you're going to uh, show us how to cook something. You've chosen lasagna. Um, let's talk about that uh, for just a moment before we go there. Um, just why, briefly, why lasagna? Why? Because I thought I would do something that has changed uh, over the years. Um, I made lasagna, uh, I think, one of the first on Good Afternoon with Judy Chalmers. And uh, in those days, you bought the pasta and you had to pre-cook it in water before you assembled yes, it. Yes. And uh, it was something new to people, but Italian restaurants in the 70s were uh, booming, and people were having it in restaurants, going on holidays, but they hadn't made it themselves. And so things have uh, changed. You now get uh, a lasagna that is uh, pre-cooked, pre and it just needs um, assembling, um, or you could use a fresh pasta. Um, and I thought I would change it and do um, uh, something like butternut squash and lots of vegetables. Right. It is very versatile. So here we are, Mary, in the Waitrose kitchen, and you're going to do lasagna. One critic I read about recently said that you're the person who introduced it to Britain, made it popular in the 1970s. That's right. Ah, so what particularly fascinated you about this? Well, I, I did a traditional one then, Al yes. no, yeah. but this time I'm going to do it with all vegetables. Mm -hmm. A good way of getting children to eat vegetables, a good family dish, mm -hmm. as a change. So I'm going to do it with a butternut squash. But first of all, I'm going to take the uh, lasagna. You know, in those days, you had to boil the lasagna. Because well, it was uh, tough. No, because it was thick. Uh, and uh, nowadays, uh, this if you're making it to serve uh, tonight or tomorrow, yes. um, it will become soft. But I like just to put it in some hot water to soften. So I need uh, three lots uh, like that and mm -hmm. then another layer. Two layers of pasta mm -hmm. and three layers of vegetables. So that's uh, six. That's it. And I need to just cut that in half. And it, the... It's not quite right, but it'll do. That's it. Now I'm going to pre-soak those. Let's put them here. And that just helps to soften it. Uh, and that's really hot water. And oh, I find, well, about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And it just makes all the difference. So mm -hmm. we'll leave that. Then the butternut squash. So many recipes say, just do it with a potato peeler. It is too tough to do, usually. Um, and so what I say is don't try and do it with a knife. So if you just take a ring from it, cut down like that, then another, do it in rings. You see how tough it is? It is so. But, and then just trim that off all the way around and it's absolutely safe. So that's quite simple. And then just dice it up.
So uh, I've got some here that I've already yeah. roasted yeah. with some onions, a yeah. little uh, olive oil. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to, that was about 25 minutes. To know when it's done, just pierce it like that and it goes in quite easily. Mm -hmm. And it's important too that the onion is done. Uh, and then a few chestnut mushrooms on top, like that. And chestnut mushrooms, I find, have got more flavour. And um, if you buy the button ones, mm. uh, they're easier. And then a little drizzle of um, olive oil over the top like that. So pop that into the oven. And that'll take about another 15 minutes here. That's it. Preheat it nice and hot. Then we're going to make a bechamel sauce, white sauce. Mm -hmm. So here I've got a pan and we'll put that on high. So for a bechamel sauce, you need equal quantity of butter and flour. Now, do you want to do it with a whisk or do you want to do it with a, uh, a wooden spoon? If you... What, do you, what do you suggest? Do well, you suggest? I like to do it with a whisk. A whisk, all right, we've got a whisk. I've got one here all ready for you. That's it. Thank you. Have you made white sauces before? Never, ever. Oh, come on. Not have I ever thought about it, ever. Really? No, I really haven't. I mean, I'm a... I'm, you know, as, a, as a chef, I'm very plain and straightforward. Well, this is fairly clear. There we are. Well, this is... That's right. And that's, that's the roux. And then I find it best to have hot milk to go into it. So that's well mixed now. And if you can add the milk little by little, while you're doing that, I'm At going to... At the same time? Uh, just a bit of little by little. <laughs> Come on. This is an impossible task. It's all your mind. Come on. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> Don't you believe it? There That's we it. are, eh? Yeah. And then put it back there for a moment. OK. Is Give that it a beat. milk? You're doing all right. Keep beating. All right, I like all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm compliment. going to make a very quick uh, tomato sauce. All right. Um, which right. I keep working on this while you do that. Put right? some more milk in. Oh, I see. Little right. by little. All right. Now, you can buy a uh, passata in cartons or you can buy it like this. And you just pour it in, and it's sieved tomatoes, and it's so easy. It smells wonderful. Isn't it? it smells well, delicious. It's, say, it, this is the quickest sauce. I'm all for speed. Yeah. <laughs> Put that out of the way. Then um, I've got some red pesto here, and I like the fresh one from Wait Waitrose. You can get uh, the green one and uh, the basil one, yeah. or you can get the yeah. tomato one. And I don't use all the pot. This is about half a pot. And I cover it in cling film and put it in the freezer. Then when I want to do a quick pasta or something, uh, just simply uh, run it through. I think it's going to... Yeah, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yes, miss. <laughs> so that's all mixed. I now need some pepper and salt in there. Do you have any kitchen hand to walk out on you at all? No, I don't. <laughs> Right, we're getting there. I've been told off by Mary Berry. And so. then the last in there. The last bit. Well, all of it to Mary Berry? You can, I think, it, right. otherwise we're never going to get there. <laughs> we'll be here <laughs> by tea time. Oh, oh, appalling, I'll insult in the house. Oh, I don't you. want it all over the cooker, I. No. <laughs> While you're just <laughs> doing like, that, I'm going to... Uh, I've got some spinach to add to the layers. Uh -huh. And the spinach, it's got to wilt. Yes. Um, and I, all you've got to do is pour boiling water over it, which oh, I'll, I'll do. Oh, no, I'll do it. Oh, good. Uh, so I've got here... I'm not sure about wilting spinach. ...some baby spinach, nice young spinach, and I'm going to pour boiling water, which we'd normally do from a kettle, but this is so posh here, we've got it already on tap. On tap, huh? Oh. Not on my CV, this. It's not on... It will be on he, your CV. He finished his career working in the kitchen with Mary Berry. Hey. I'm rather proud of this, Mary, actually, because well, I've seen it go... I want it to be very, it, very smooth. I've seen it go from a goo to something like very nicely mashed potatoes. Right, let's have a look at that sauce. Let's look at what about that. Mark it out of ten. I, I think you're a star, star sauce maker. <laughs> right, let's put some mustard in there. Dijon mustard. Like that. And uh -huh. we can turn the heat off now. Turn the heat off. OK. Yeah, I think Dijon mustard goes well with a... Uh, white sauce. Then we'll put some salt in there and some pepper. And I always use black pepper because you can see where you've been. Seen, right. Now, proper chefs yeah. use white, don't they, with Do they? fish and yeah. things. Yeah. And Gruyere cheese. I think we'll change over to a spoon now because you'll get that cheese. Thank Check. you. Then we'll put the cheese in. Mm -hmm. Not, I've got another bowl of cheese to put on the top. It's beautifully cheesy. Because remember, we haven't got meat. You need... Right. Uh, that's it. 
When you do when you do a meat lasagna, what's your favorite one? So ragu or uh, yes, I like uh, a beef one. A beef one. A beef yeah, one. Yeah. And um, they're lovely, aren't they? So now we're an assembly job. Let's be all tidy. There we are. Got some more cheese for the top. So put this in there. You just give it to me. <laughs> oh, thank you. The tough bits, you see. Right, now, over there is some spinach. Yes. And you've wilted it. Well, I've wilted it. Yes. Good old chef's term, wilting it. Here. Yep. There's one thing that's missing. We haven't got the vegetables. They'll be done in the oven. Can you just bring them out? Of course, chef. That's lovely. There we go. Right. The tomato sauce is in. Then we put uh, a little of the a third of the white sauce. Now, it doesn't matter that it's all blotchy. I don't want it. You can't make it level at this stage. You just put, that's about a third in there. There we are. Just move it a bit like that. Then we're going to put a third of the vegetables in. And it's wonderful colour there. Nice, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Very tempting. Do you want a cloth? Yeah, I've no. got, I've got... You've got kitchen hands. Yeah, I've got kitchen yeah. hands, that's it. <laughs> that's it there. Right, we've got the vegetables, we've got the sauces. Now we've got a third of the spinach. That just gives a nice surprise bit of colour. Mm -hmm. And if you hadn't got spinach, you could use a good handful of ch uh, chopped parsley. That's it. Then we come to the pasta. Three sheets across. It, and it's just become soft. And mm -hmm. you can just put a little bit at the end and maybe a little bit down the side, like that. OK? Yep. Then we repeat the process mm -hmm. again. Now, the sauce goes over the top. And then we put the cheese. Now, that doesn't... That looks a very special supper. And this goes over all of the top it. there, all of it. Ooh, uh, gosh. Up. Wonderful. Yes, that's all right. It'll spread itself. And I've buttered the dish before I started... Yes. ...because I wanted it to um, be yes. easier to wash up... Uh -huh. ...at the end. Right. And I like the fact that you don't coat it completely over the top. Well, yes. Can I, about spare? Come on, we've got to scrape our pans. <laughs> when I was doing Good Afternoon, yeah. I was called into the green room once at the end and Diana Potter said, uh, there's a phone call for you. And I went in for the phone call and the woman said, uh, Hello, is that Mary Berry? And I said, yes. <laughs> she said, I like you because you scrape your bowls and pans proper. <laughs> I've never forgotten it. There she we are. Was... And then cheese over the top. She was a character, that Dan Potter, wasn't she? Wasn't she, just? Yeah. Oh, you could see her coming down the stairs. Oh, yeah. She was like the English at Cressy coming over oh. the hill, wasn't she? she was I was <laughs> terrified of her. <laughs> oh, you weren't the only one. But right. she was a very good producer. Now, that's uh, ready to... Uh, that looks cook. fantastic. Remember? We're nearly there. I'm inordinately proud of my part in that. I really am. I might frame that and take it home. Uh, now, that, you could leave that till tonight mm -hmm. or tomorrow mm -hmm. to cook, but uh, it'll take about 25 minutes in a hot oven. Wonderful. Should be ready. For it our, is. our masterpiece. Are. Our masterpiece. Those look like boxing gloves. I don't even <laughs> had them on before. <laughs> Right. Onto the here, here if you will. I'm always, oh. It'll be heavy. No, you, thank you for telling me that. Yes, there we are. On there would be lovely. Wow, that, that looks, looks fan doesn't look fantastic. Yes, the cheese is spread over the cheese sauce <laughs> is spread over the top. Shall we shut the yeah, oven? Yeah, let's do that. All we've got to do now is to taste it. Now I would say say that would serve about six or eight. Just depends what size your family is. And remember, we talked about greasing the tin. How mm -hmm. the dish. So let's take out a portion. And it shouldn't be all stiff. If you put too much pasta in, it'll be stiff. This will come out in one fell swoop. Sweet. There we are. That Bravo. nice crispy top. And then when you look inside, look in there, you've got your layers of cheese and tomato mm -hmm. and uh, the spinach. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Looks let's really have good. a go. Let's have a go. There we are. Okay. 
Move it all to one side. Okay. Right. Sort of aim to have a little bit of everything. So I'm fighting over a piece of spinach. Sorry, it would be a bit hot. Mm. It really is lovely. That's beautiful. And I'm not a great fan of all vegetable stuff at all. I can imagine that. You're a barnsley chop man. I'm a, meat, I'm a meat man. But this is I'm beautiful. I'm going in for another one now. Yeah. It's just as I wanted it to be. Interesting layers, and I think uh, everybody would enjoy it uh, as something quite different mm. from the usual meat lasagna. Yeah, Here so, we go. yeah so many diff different flavours and different mm. textures too. It's really good. You're very clever. Can I come and live next door to you? With right? pressure. <laughs> and we'll play cricket. We'll play cricket on the lawn. Okay.